Chicano activists in East Los Angeles were protesting the Vietnam War when police fired tear gas into the crowd. As the chaos broke out, Ruben Salazar, one of the few journalists from the mainstream media to cover the Chicano movement, had decided to take a break and ordered a beer at a nearby bar. But he was never able to drink that beer because a sheriff's deputy fired a tear gas canister into the bar and hit Salazar straight in the head. Ruben Salazar was born in Ciudad Juarez in 1928, but when he was less than a year old, he and his family moved to El Paso, Texas, just on the other side of the U.S.-Mexico border. After graduating from high school, Salazar left El Paso and spent two years abroad in the U.S. Army. When he came back, he received a degree in journalism, and in 1955, he became the first Latinx reporter to ever work at El Paso's local paper, The Herald Post. One of Salazar's first assignments was to write about the inhumane conditions of El Paso's city jails. And in order to get the story, he got himself arrested and spent a night in jail. His work got the attention of the Los Angeles Times, and in 1959, they offered him a job. Salazar quickly worked his way up the ranks. He started out as a beat reporter, then became a foreign correspondent in Vietnam, and soon after, a bureau chief in Mexico City. But back home, Chicano activists were fed up with the inferior treatment of the Mexican-American community, their poor education, and their lacking political representation. In 1968, over 20,000 Chicano students walked out of high schools all across East LA, demanding better education for their community, and the LA Times wanted Ruben Salazar to cover it. It didn't take him long to see the struggles of the Chicano community, but the more Salazar covered it, the more he struggled to stay neutral. Because it's easy for the establishment to say, aren't we all the same? Aren't we all Americans? Well, obviously we're not. Salazar felt his editors at the Times had little interest in the details of the events. So in 1970, he transitioned into a part-time role and became a news director at the local Spanish language station. By doing this, Salazar was able to tell the stories of the Latinx community to both Latinx and white audiences. He was a harsh critic of racial discrimination and police brutality, and it was no secret that Salazar's criticism created tensions between the two parties. He even became a target of the FBI. The agency had collected a 200-page file on Salazar during his time as a journalist. So when Salazar's work was cut short, a lot of speculation arose. Salazar, who was covering an anti-war protest led by the Chicano Moratorium, had decided to take a break at the Silver Dollar Bar and Cafe when the rally quickly broke into chaos. Police claim they received an anonymous report that there was an armed man inside the Silver Dollar. They demanded everyone come out, but when no one did, they shot tear gas projectiles straight into the bar, hitting Salazar in the head and killing him instantly. The community was outraged and demanded answers but it ended up in the sheriff department's favor. Although Salazar's death was ruled a homicide, the deputy who fired the canister was never charged. There remains much speculation around whether the tragedy was an accident or a targeted hit. Salazar's passing only ignited the Chicano community even more. Activists railed against police brutality and fought to make their voices heard. And while many of the issues he covered continue to exist today, Salazar brought them to the forefront. He was a voice in the mainstream media for the Latinx community when there was none.